Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Dr. Mattels Costa. He is a veterinarian and PhD from University of Minnesota. It's great to see you here. Great to see you too. Thanks for an invitation. You bet. Um, you know, when I was going through the program for the 2019 uh, Al Lehman Swine Conference, your presentation jumped out at me because it was a disease I hadn't even seen mentioned in a program in a long time, and that's swine dysentery. I mean, I almost got nostalgic when I looked at it because <laughs> uh, I remember writing about it and hearing about it so much back in the 70s and 80s, and here we are, 2019, and we're talking about it again. What's going on? I know, right? Uh, it's a, a re-emergent problem, let's put it this way. So swine sintry definitely disappeared from the U.S. in the early 90s, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, it tried to make a comeback in the early 2000s with Brachyspira hampsonii. So swine sintry is classically associated with Brachyspira hyodesinteriae. Yes. That bacteria we have known for decades, it's an old fella. Now Brachyspira hampsonii caused the exact same disease, but it's a different bacteria. So made an appearance in the early 2000s, um, stronger in Canada than in the US, but still we couldn't find it here. Uh, but now we know with the combination of antibiotic restraints and policies changing, um, whatever else we can't really understand, but it's definitely making a comeback as we remove antibiotics from our herds. And I wanted to ask you about that because again, going back a long, long time ago, I, I remember Back then, uh, the antibiotic bacitracin used to be used in the grower finisher feeds quite a bit, and that was also used for what they called bloody scours or swine dysentery at a much higher rate, of course. Um, producers aren't using that medication the same way they used to years ago, so has that maybe opened up the door for more infection? Um, not only that specific drug, right? The fact yeah. that we don't have um, a variety of drugs available for veterinary use anymore uh, has really limited what we can use to suppress the disease. Um, as we progress into herds with higher health, we know that some of this disease will make a comeback just because we know there is less disease present, we're using less antibiotics, and it's natural for this bacteria to thrive again. So it's a combination. It's hard to pinpoint one specific reason, but um, in Europe is a real problem, a real issue, and in Canada we do see it there. And uh, we know that it's uh, just a matter of time until as we move forward with this antibiotic resistance policies and antibiotic usage that it makes a comeback in the U.S. So what do we do about it? Great question. <laughs> Unfortunately, no commercial available vaccine. So we can't just vaccinate for swine sintry. Uh, the only way we have to control and uh, prevent it or even try to eradicate it is antibiotics. Um, we can also depopulate and go through all that hurdle and try to get rid of it that way, but again, um, it's very hard to keep it out, keep it out of the barn. Uh, rodents can keep, keep the bacteria alive and shed it, birds as well, it can survive in organic matter. It's a challenging task, so surviving with it may not be a, a choice either. So uh, at this time, it's hard, it's very hard. It, either antibiotics or you are, your, your fate is defined. Does the disease look any different today than it did 25, 30 years ago, and I realize that was before your time in swine production, <laughs> but from consulting with your colleagues and from what you've read in the literature, is, is it the same bug with the same problems? Right, great question. Yes, consulting with my colleagues and, uh, and old uh, teachers, uh, what I hear is, uh, actually, no, it has changed a little bit. The bug's the same. Clinical presentation in the past was that strict bloody diarrhea, right? Mm -hmm. Blood scours. Now it looks like it will get there, but you may see a, well, I like to call it the poop gradient. It goes from green to red, and it goes from watery to really mucoid. Um, you will see the, the landmark is still mucoid diarrhea, but you may see, you know, that gradient, just watery diarrhea, and out of the blue, it may show up as bloody, but it's, you know, it's not that strict bloody diarrhea anymore. You can see a bit of a gradient there. And how old are the pigs when you're seeing this? Same age. So any, we know now that after weaning, any pig is susceptible. It doesn't mean they will develop disease in a commercial setting. So especially grower and finisher pigs. Are, are there any other bacterial or viral pathogens that consistently show up with uh, pigs that are infected with swine dysentery? Great question. Uh, we don't fully understand swine dysentery to the point that we don't even know if just brachyspire is enough to cause disease. There's a few studies back in the 70s that showed that if a pig without any other bacteria, a completely sterile pig, is given brachyspire hyacinthiae, it does not develop swine dysentery. Hmm. So we actually believe that 
you know, you need something else. We just don't know what exactly it is. And that's actually part of my research program, trying to understand what leads to swine dysentery. And we know now that there is something else. We don't know who. Could be just a random combination of bacteria. Could also be a specific combination of specific bacteria. But uh, yes, there is such a thing of synergism between them. So what are you doing about it? I mean, you've got research uh, underway specifically. What are you looking at? We're looking specifically at host pathogen microbiome interactions. So what that means is we're looking at how the pig talks to the bacteria and how Brachyspira talks to the rest of the bacteria, right? And what we have learned is that it looks like Brachyspira actually tells who gets to grow and who doesn't get to grow within that microbiome. So we're exploring that as a possible control target. Can we actually stop Brachyspira from bossing around in the gut microbiome? What about feed? Because we're feeding pigs much differently than we did, again, 25, 30 years ago. Does that have anything to do with it? Great question. There is some research showing that if we modulate the feed and change some of the ingredients, we can decrease the incidence and the severity of swine dysentery. Mm -hmm. We believe so, and this could, again, be related to the microbiome, right? We know that when we change feed ingredients, that change the bacteria that will thrive in that microenvironment. So um, no one has shown that link yet, but it's not something possible. So you've got the research underway. In the meantime, um, what should veterinarians and producers be looking for? Great question. So diagnostics still your key way to go and actually identify and diagnose. You know, I'm talking about laboratory diagnostics, so make sure you send samples for culture and PCR. Uh, culture is defi definitely more sensitive, so don't rely just on PCR. Mm -hmm. But culture does pose an additional problem. Uh, Brachyspira are usually associated with hemolysis. And classically, if someone, uh, your results had strong hemolysis, you would associate that with a bad Brachyspira that would lead to swine dysentery. That's not true anymore. We know that some of the bad Brachyspira, such as Brachyspira hyacinthiae, can actually be weak hemolytic. So it's kind of a gray zone right now when it comes to diagnosis, but it's still key to have both PCR and culture results to confirm your field diagnosis. And once that's in, you have to discuss uh, with your farm manager and the staff, how are you gonna deal with that? Uh, how is biosecurity gonna change? What drugs are you gonna use? And you know, figure out really an actual plan to try and minimize the losses. And one final question, are there certain types of farms or management systems, pig flows, where you've seen a higher incidence of this? Unfortunately, no. It's not something that really seems to affect. Once the bug is there, it's there. Uh, all in, all out definitely helps with general health and may make it a bit easier to get rid of the bug, uh, especially when it comes to environmental contamination. But there isn't a specific association, so there isn't really something we can do that will stop transmission or stop the disease, unfortunately. Unfortunately, indeed. Well, just as soon as we thought maybe we had this disease behind us, it's come back for an encore, but that's not a good thing. No, unfortunately. Well, thanks for looking at it for Thank us. Thank you so much. We've been talking to Mattels Costa. He is a veterinarian and PhD assistant professor at the University of Minnesota. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you.